And so today, we come again to the preaching of the Word. And so if you have your Bibles, bow down with me, and we will pray. Salamat Panginoon na we can have this moment again to not only glean, but to really drink deeply from your counsel. For your word is a lamp unto our feet. You said in your commands, Lord, that we should meditate on your laws day and night. And we shall be like trees. We shall be like oak trees planted by streams, streams of rivers. And our leaves will never wither. We will still yield our fruit even in this season of dryness. And whatever it is that our hands are doing, you promise your prosperity. Lord, your word is a sustenance to those that are sick. Your word is a comfort to those that grieve. Your word is a source of hope to those that look ahead to the better days that you have prepared for all your people. So once again, Holy Spirit, would you now come and speak to us in ways only you can. For your word is life. The Apostle Peter would say, Unto whom shall we run? Only you, Lord Jesus, have the words of life. And so unto you, Lord Jesus, we run. Unto your vine we cling. And unto your power we take refuge. As you now speak unto your people, in the name of Jesus, everyone will say, Amen. 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 So, if you have been online, if you have been tuning in to our preachings for the last two Sundays, this is now our third Sunday of having online service, you should know by now that we are in the series of sermons called I Am Second. Here in Lighthouse, this is now our fifth Sunday. Kasi yung dalawang Sunday po, hindi pa tayo naka-quarantine. But this is spoken volumes to the hearts of the many people that have really followed this sermon series. What is I Am Second? I Am Second is an attitude that reminds us that we are not first, that God is. Eh, pastor, di ba obvious naman yun? Alam natin yun, yes. Pero ang paalala po ay gamot sa taong nakakalimot. And in, in this life, kahit po ako mga kapatid, ang dami ko nang nalilimutan sa mundo. And I, so, I thank God that every time I open the pages of the, words, of the Lord's counsel, I get to be refreshed and get to be reminded of some precious truths na parang newsfeed sa Facebook, minsan natatabunan ng napakaraming newsfeed na dumadating. Kakapost mo pa lang, mamaya hindi mo na makita sa sarili mong page ang pinost mo. Ganon din po ang limitation ng alaala ng tao, hindi po ba? Our memories are so finite. Our attention spans span so limited. And so, we are being reminded in this sermon series that we are second because God alone is first. We talked about the life of Joshua. He was second to Moses, and that's why the Lord was able to do so many extremely wonderful, marvelous wonders to the life of Joshua. We talked about Elisha, the second man in command after Elijah, and because of him, because Elisha acknowledged that he is second, he was second and God is first, double portion of anointing was allotted to him. John the Baptist would say, I must now decrease so that Jesus must increase. Because he knew he was second. He was forever going to be second and he was never going to be first. John the Baptist was the greatest of all. This was birthed by a woman, as Jesus Christ himself would say. Last Sunday, we talked about Stephen. And um, we made a shout out to the Stephens of our generation. People who are second. People who are willing to be inconvenienced by life. People who are saying, I don't mind being a waiter. I don't mind being the one to distribute the goods. I don't mind being the one to do the pamamalengke. I don't mind being the one to post encouraging posts. If that is what I can contribute, if what I can contribute in times like this is to go down to my knees in prayers, dahil hindi naman ako doktor, hindi naman ako nurse, hindi naman ako frontliner, and yet in the spiritual realm, you can be a Stephen. You can serve and glorify the name of the Lord. And I pray that all of us are learning many precious nuggets of wisdom 
in this series of sermons, which is going to end today, this Sunday. Next Sunday, as I will announce later, we're going to commence another series of sermons just in time for the Holy Week and the Holy Month that we are so looking forward to celebrate. So I pray may natutunan kayo dahil sayang naman kung wala tayong natutunan sa mga pinagdadaanan natin. Umuwi raw ang isang anak sa kanyang nanay. Sabi ng nanay, anak, anong, anong tinuro ng teachers school ngayong araw? Sabi ng anak, nay, tinuro po kami paano gumamit ng po at opo. May na-excite yung nanay. May natutunan ka naman anak. Sabi ng anak, abay oo naman. Siyempre. Na maraming bagay tayong pwedeng pagdaanan at pwedeng lumagpas lang sa ating mga utak. Pero kung ito ay iimbak natin sa kailalim ng ating puso, this will leave us to be changed people and we will never be the same again. Now, one of those things that I enjoyed reading, I don't, I don't read much because sometimes it just adds, adds so much to the anxieties. But this forwarded message was from Bill Gates, one of my Facebook mates forwarded this to me. And Bill Gates was saying that these COVID times, he said it is sent to remind us of the important lessons that we seem to have forgotten and it is up to us if we will learn from them or not. Wag nating sasayangin ang lessons na binibigay ng buhay at ng Diyos in these very painful times na ating pinagdadaanan because they are too painful to be taken for granted. They are too precious to just be overlooked. Sabi ni Bill Gates, it is reminding us these COVID times it is reminding us that we are all equal. Kung si Prince Charles, kung mga senators, kung mga the best of the best of the medical doctors ay tinatamaan. This reminds us, as a prayer of Pastor Sam would say, the, the princess and the, the, commoner, the commoners are being hit by this. We are all equal when it comes to the COVID virus. Number two, he says that we are all connected. Na lahat ng ginagawa natin ay pwedeng makaapekto sa buhay ng maraming tao. That's why we are family. Ang itinutulong mo ay malayong-malayo ang nararating. At pati yung aching mo, malayo rin ang nararating. Pati yung droplets ng ubo mo, malayo rin ang mararating. We are all connected somehow in this planet. Number three says, we are being reminded of how precious our health is. Pag tinamaan na ang iyong kalusugan, walang kung magkano man ang amount ng pera meron ka sa bangko. And so, if you are well and healthy at this time, be disciplined to keep it that way. It is also reminding us of the brevity of life, the shortness of life. And therefore, Bill Gates would say, we should have a spiritual purpose in all the things that we are going through, di ba? And one of those, my friends, is to really be of help to other people and not hoard on the toilet paper. Because life is too short para sayangin mo sa pakikipag-away sa Facebook. It is also reminding us of how materialistic life has turned out to be. Na in COVID times like this, na naka-quarantine ka, you just realize you just really need what? Food, shelter, and medicine. That's it. You don't need all these extra trappings and trimmings of life for you to be happy. It is also reminding us of how important our life, our home, our family life is. Ngayon, naka-quarantine tayo at force ka na makipagtitigan sa asawa mo ng 24-7. In, uh, of course, uh, wala lang yung time na tulog kayong dalawa. It's important to be reconnected in such human level. It is also reminding us that our true work is to look after each other. Not the job that you have, but to look out for each other, to protect each other and to benefit each other. I love this. Sabi niya, it is also reminding us to keep our egos in check. Naakala mo, dahil sikat ka at ikaw ay talagang ipinagbubunyi ng buong mundo, check your ego again because one virus can put the whole world on a standstill. Lahat ng ekonomiya tumitigil. Stock market nagbabagsakan. So keep that ego in check. If you think you are too important, think again. But at the same time, Bill Gates would say, it is reminding us that there is this power of free will that is in our hands. That we can choose to either worry to death or choose to share, to give, and to help because difficult times like this, Abinya, bring out our true colors. It brings us to choose whether we can be patient or be panicked. 
to choose whether to think this is the end or this can be a new beginning. It is a choice. It is also behooving us to think and to recognize how sick the earth is. Kaya sa pagkain natin, nagkakasakit tayo. Sa ating kabisihan, sinisira natin ang mundo. Kaya natutuwa ako na ang Manila Bay right now, ang right now, ngayon, ang Manila Bay, ang kulay ng tubig ay parang burakay na. Uh, ano na siya ngayon? Yung aquamarine. Just two weeks na walang nagtatapon ng basura. Just two weeks na walang nagdi-dispose ng mga industrial wastes sa mga factories ba or mga hotels. Nakaka-recover, nakaka muling nakaka-breathe ang ating planeta. And it is also a good reminder as history would show us that after every difficulty, there is always ease. That life somehow goes into this great cycle. And so I pray yung lessons na natutunan natin ngayon, we will not take these things for granted, but I pray that we will be changed people after this. I say amen to that. Kaya sabi ni the Bill Gates, instead of thinking of COVID-19 as a great disaster, he says, I'd rather see it as a great corrector because it is correcting so many of our lives' perspectives, the way we approach things, even for us pastors, the way we minister, the way we pray, the way we really consume and kneel down before the Lord. This corrects a lot of things and moments of cataclysms like this should draw us closer to the reality of who we are, but more so of who God is. And so, in the light of the cross of Christ, I proclaim that His ultimate plan for us is redemption and not destruction. Dumating man ang temporary afflictions in life, as the Apostle Paul would say, it is achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs the pains and the burdens that we are now currently experiencing. We don't deny that this COVID virus is destructive and that's why stay at home. Obey your barangay captains and your barangay tanods. Don't go out without that quarantine pass. But at the same time, have that sense of deep hope, mga kapatid, that in the light of eternity, in the eternal plans of the Lord, the ultimate plan is for us to be redeemed, for this experience to make us better people, better children of the Lord, and yes, for us to have a perspective of eternity. That if our hope, as the Apostle Paul would say, is just for this life, then we are to be pitied amongst all men. Kawawa naman tayo kung ating perspektiba ay para lamang sa buhay sa ngayon. There is an eternity that awaits us. And for that, and for Jesus, we live and we move and we have our being. And so, if you are now in your the comforts of your living rooms or your bedrooms even, wherever you are watching this live telecast. I want you now to go to your Bibles and turn to Second Timothy. Turn to Second Timothy. We will be reading eight verses today, but I will be expositing on so much more verses. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Second Timothy, let's start with chapter one and verse one. I took time to put it here in our PowerPoint. So let's read this. Maybe as a family, you can read this out loud together, or you can read along in the quietness of your heart, because the Word of God is powerful. Even when you read it and you say out that out loud, it is already cutting through your soul and your spirit. Verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as my forefathers did, with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. The Apostle Paul was such an intercessor. Verse 4, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, Louise, and in your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. Verse 6, For this reason, 
I remind you, Timothy, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity. Another version says, for God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Another version says, of a sound mind. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord. Or be ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of his word. And everyone will say, Amen. Amen. And so the last installment of this sermon series, we're going to talk about Timothy. The one who knew he was second. And this is a shout out to the many Timothys that we have in our midst. Now, just to give you a context of Timothy. Uh, Timothy was a young person when he got to know the wisdom and the counsel of the Lord. But thanks to his grandmother and his mother, as our reading would suggest a while ago. Nagsimula ang kanilang pananampalataya kay Lola Louise at kay Mami Eunice. In one of the uh, missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul, Paul and Silas was driven to that part of ancient Turkey, and they were driven out by the people, and so they, they went to this name called Derby and Lystra, and that, Lystra, and that was where the family of Timothy lived. And so the book of Acts would suggest that from the early onset of the first century Christianity, many Jewish people came to the faith. By this time, many of the Jewish people were in diaspora because of the Roman occupation. Many of the Jewish people were sent to the very, very corners of the different corners of the planet, which we call now the Asia Minor. They called during the time the Asia Minor. And so these people, the Jewish people, their hearts have always been tender towards God. They have been raised in the Torah. They have been raised in the writings of the prophets. And so when the Apostle Paul came and along with it, the signs and wonders that accompanied the preaching of the word, Louise and Eunice came to the faith and they made it a point that young Timothy would be taught the ways of the Lord. I would like to make this early shout out to the Lolos and the Lolas that you have such unique roles in the lives of your children. My mom in summer would tell me that as far back as she was young, my mom was born 1942. As far back as the 1940s, 1950s, even if as traditional religious people in the province would not be given access to the Bible, my mom would say that she would always have this deep communion with the Holy Spirit. That she always knew in every step that she would make, the Holy Spirit would be her guide. Why? Because her Lola, Lola Idang, her Lola, my great-grand Lola, Lola Idan, would always call on the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why she grew up educating us. Mga anak, kung meron kayong kakapitan, kung meron kayong tatawagan, it must be the Holy Spirit of God. Hindi ko pa nababasa ang theology of the Holy Spirit, pneumatology. Hindi ko pa nababasa ang doctrine on the Holy Spirit. But I already knew from, from my younghood that the Holy Spirit is my friend. That the Holy Spirit is just one breath away. I already knew that the Holy Spirit is power unto my life. So, sa mga lolas, wag niyo pong i-underestimate ang inyong kapangyarihan sa buhay ng inyong mga anak. My uh, mama Linda, my wife Rose's mom, she was, she was schooled by her mom, Lola Elena. Now, Lola Elena was never schooled in a formal school and yet ang kanyang binabasa araw-araw nothing else no exaggeration nothing else but the bible king james version pa and so for a samarenia eastern summer si lola elena and she would go into the word of god and uh, she would always teach her children and every time superstitions would come he would always say ata what i got to a bible in the very distinct Eastern summer accent, what I got into a Bible, pagampo nagadlak kita kan Jesus. And so my mama Linda grew up to be a great teacher and storyteller of Bible stories. And so Timothy was 
discipled by these godly ladies. And even before Apostle Paul met him, the Bible would say that Timothy was already respected. He already enjoyed the, the good reputation amongst the people in Lystra. And so, in the second missionary journey of the Apostle Paul, he got to meet this now young teenager, Timothy. And the Bible would say, the Apostle Paul took notice of him, laid hands on him, even subjected him to the Jewish rites of circumcision. And from that time on, Timothy was the second man in command of the Apostle Paul. He was now the Elisha. He was now the Joshua. He was now the Stephen of... He was now the John the Baptist of the Apostle Paul. Wherever the Apostle Paul would go, in all his second, third missionary journeys, Timothy would be with him. So, galing sila rito sa Lystra. This part here is Lystra. And they would go to Troas, they would go to Philippi, they would go to Thessalonica, they would go to Corinth, and then back to, to, to Ephesus. All of these missionary journeys, the Apostle Paul would take Timothy for how many years? For almost three decades of the Apostle Paul's journey. And so, the Apostle Paul and Timothy developed this father and son relationship. Sobrang kindred hearts, sobrang kindred spirits. And so I also make a shout out right now to the titos and the titas, the ninongs and the ninangs. You might not be the biological father because Timothy's dad was a Greek and historians would say an unbeliever and even suggested that at an early stage, see, Eunice was abandoned by, by her Greek husband. And so the single mom raised up Timothy, and now came the Apostle Paul and Silas and all the other believers that fathered Timothy. Mahalaga po ang inyong role, mga ninongs and mga ninangs, sa buhay ng inyong mga inaanak. I have children. We have three children. And every time I would, like, sermonize on my kids, alam niyo yung pakiramdam na pumapasok lamang sa isang tenga, labas sa pangalawa. Alam ko po yan dahil siyempre pag si nanay or si tatay nagsasalita, ay nako, sermon time na naman. And so, I employ the ninongs and the ninang selves. Ninong, kusapin mo naman yung panganay ko. And the ninong would take him out for Starbucks. And then after two hours, my panganay would come home and I would say, oh, anong sinabi ni ninong? And he would say, oh, pa, mag-aral daw akong mabuti, wag daw akong mag-girlfriend. And in my mind, I would say, yan ang sinasabi ko sa'yo eh. Pero pag si Nino ang nagsabi, pasok ka agad. Bakit? Merong frappuccino eh. Merong uh, libring uh, Starbucks planner. Eh. And so, mga ninongs and ninangs, such is your power in the lives of the children. So, Timothy, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, we now call in Pauline epistles, but they are also what we call the prison letters, prison epistles. 1 Timothy was written by the Apostle Paul during his first imprisonment in in Rome, it was short-lived. He was even in under house arrest, and she, he got to be freed by the Roman authorities. But 2 Timothy, now we now know, is the very last letter that the Apostle Paul ever wrote. In 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, a father to a son, Paul would remind Timothy, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example to all the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Why? Because the main issue in 1 Timothy was false teachers. Napakaraming mga false teachers na naglipanan ng unang panahon. And they were trying to refute the gospel that the Apostle Paul was now preaching to the many Christian churches all over Asia Minor. And so, Paul would now charge Timothy. Your youth does not disqualify you. And so, let me make a shout out to the young people that are watching right now. Just because you are young, it doesn't mean that you cannot speak. For as long as your hearts are filled with the counsel of the Lord, you can speak to your barcadas, you can chat them, you can viber them, you can zoom them, especially in quarantine times like this. For as long as your life, your speech is an example of of congruence with your walk with the Lord, your life, your love, your faith, in your purity, sabi ni Apostle Paul, be an example unto them. And in 2 Timothy, a key verse there would say, because God has not given you a spirit of fear, 
Because maybe in his younghood, maybe in his youth, Timothy was very much prone to the timidity that characterizes teenage years or young age. Akala niya nakakahiya naman kung ako'y magsasalita, baka sabihin masyado akong atrebido. But no, the apostle Paul would say, fear does not have a hold on you, Timothy. And I speak that word of God to the ones watching this online sermon right now. Right now, fear is knocking in the doors of the hearts of many people. And fear paralyzes more than the virus ever can. And fear is spreading faster than the virus ever can. Why? Because it happens here and it goes down, it goes down here. And when the heart is filled with fear, the mouth and the fingertips will start posting fear. But God has given you, the Bible declares, the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Na hindi mo kailangang i-check out ang yung katalinuhan sa labas just because you are in the realm of faith. Faith and sound mind and prayers, they can go together. So, even as you proclaim the healing of the Lord, you can have your alcohol with you. Even as you proclaim that these are holy hands, pure and clean before the Lord, you can always have your alcohol every so often or wash your hands kung ubus ang alcohol mo. These are not necessarily either or. This is the power of the end. You have power, you have love, you have the gift of a sound mind. And the Apostle Paul would say, reflect on what I am saying to you, Timothy. Because if you do this, the Lord will give you insight into all this. That is an I am second classic attitude, mga kaibigan. An I am second guy would say, I am teachable. An I am second person says, kung ano man ang aking narinig sa mga taong pinagkakatiwalaan ko, hindi ko siya sasalubungin ng attitude na nagsasabing, ay, alam ko na yan. Gusto mo, Pastor Joe, ako pa ang mag-sermon mas magandang sermon kaysa sa ginagawa mo ngayon. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. But when we are open, when we have the I am second attitude, we can say, Lord, I receive your counsel. And so the gift of insights, the gift of wisdom comes from you. And it will change you for the rest of our lives. It will change us for the rest of our lives. But then Timothy, just like all the other characters that we preached on the last few Sundays, had to come to his crossroad. He would always be elated, I'm sure, every time he would receive letters from the Apostle Paul, that even if the Apostle Paul was inside the prisons, he would still write Timothy encouraging him and uh, encouraging him and charging him, go to Philippi, address some concerns, go to Corinth, talk to the Corinthians, go to Ephesus, pastor the church. I'm sure he would be so excited just to write that love, le- to read that love letter coming from his spiritual father. But then, as he read on this epistle from his spiritual father, the Apostle Paul, 2 Timothy 4, verse 6 would say, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering. I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Deep in the spirit of the Apostle Paul, he just knew He has already served the Lord for almost three decades now, but he just knew. The shipwrecks, he survived. The snake bite, he survived. The stoning, he survived. All of the other accidents, all of the other persecutions and the beatings of those Judaizers, he survived. One, two, imprisonment, he survived. But he just knew. At this time of his life, he just knew in his spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit revealed it unto him. As he revealed it to Moses, as he revealed it to Elijah, as he revealed it probably to John the Baptist, his time of departure is at hand. And you could just imagine, siguro talagang nahulog si Timothy sa kanyang kinaupon habang binabasa niya ang epistle na to. And as I reread his epistle to the rest of the people in Ephesus, which he was pastoring at the time, siguro laglag sa upuan ang mga tao. Why? Because not you, Apostle Paul. You have even defied the venom of the serpent, of the snake. You will not die, Apostle Paul. No, wag ka ng ganyan. But the Apostle Paul would say, no, my time of departure has come. And for any Jewish person, that metaphor of a drink offering being poured, they are very familiar with this. Because every time somebody would take his cup and pour it 
It is a symbolism, it is a metaphor, it is an orality exercise that now my life has come to its destined end. It was a crossroad. It must have been a crossroad for Timothy. And the classic line that all of you Christians must know by now, he says, I have fought the good fight. Tapos na ang laban. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And the Apostle Paul would say, and maybe this time, Timothy is now crying as he would read this epistle. And the Apostle Paul continues by saying, I'm already, he says, finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Maybe the Apostle Paul has been given the Stephen experience that he is now seeing the windows, the, the doors of heaven opening, and he was now seeing the Son of God waiting for his arrival in the eternal kingdom. Nakikita na ni, ni Apostle Paul, hindi ang coronavirus, but ang tunay na corona na ibibigay ng Panginoon sa mga taong tapat na nagsilbi sa kanya hanggang sa huling hibla ng kanyang hininga. And so, I think, hindi ko na quote dito ang verse 9. He says, come to me quickly. Nasa Ephesus ka, may time pa. I don't know where my, when my hanging schedule would be because history would show that the Apostle Paul was decapitated. Napugutan po ng ulo. I don't know when that execution day. So come to me quickly. Why? Because he says, only Luke is with me right now. Pinasundurin niya si Mark. Yung dati niya nakatampuhan. Sunduin mo rin si Mark. Bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. It must have been healing for Mark to have heard that. Because before, talagang inayawan siya ni Apostle Paul, dal na homesick si Mark, iniwan si Apostle Paul, kaya ayaw na siyang isama ni Apostle Paul. But on the last few days, few weeks of his life, sabi niya, tawagin mo si Mark. Napakaganda ng kanyang contribution sa ministry. And look at this. Oh, this makes me cry when he says, bring the cloak. Timothy, pakidala nga yung, yung kumot. <sighs> Nilalamig ako eh. You know, I, I, I feel so much for the COVID victims that, that faced their death without the benefit of the presence of their loved ones. I feel so much for, for those people that grieve so much the passing on of a dear person without even the benefit of a proper burial rites. So, mga kapatid, let me just pause for a while because I know this has been repeated again and again in social media. Stay home so that we will not be party to the spreading of the virus. Stay home because a lot of people are, are dying this death which for me could have been avoided. And the hard, how difficult it must have been for those waiting for their last breath to come. I have been in the bedside of dying loved ones and I know how painful it can be. But more painful it must be for people who would not be there for their loved ones. Oh, the apostle, the apostle Paul would say, Timothy, bilisan mo na. Dalhin mo na rin yung aking mga libro. Dalhin mo na rin yung aking kumot. My friends, this crossroad that Timothy was subjected to brought him to his core. Maybe dagli-dagli siyang sumakay sa kanyang kabayo, dagli-dagli siyang nag-impake, kulang yung oras, kulang yung oras, let's do this. But maybe as he was traveling from Ephesus all the way to Rome, malayong, malayong lakbayan to siguro mga three weeks yun sa pangangabayo niya. Maybe every moment, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng kahit huling suliap lang sa aking ama. But as, as he traveled, as he traveled, the words of the Apostle Paul would now resonate in his heart. It must have brought Timothy to his very core. Let me share with you five of these core values. Number one is a son's dependence. Timothy, the son of Paul. Now, all these 30 years, Timothy had been dependent on the Apostle Paul. 
Puntahan mong Corinth? Yes, Dad. Puntahan mong Philippi? Dali mo yung letter nito? Yes, Dad. Punta ka sa Thessalonica? Yes po. Every step of the way for the last 30 years, he was dependent on the command and the wisdom and whatever it is that he would have to be at the beck and call of his spiritual father. But this time, Timothy knew that even the great apostle Paul had to acknowledge his mortality. And so, this verse would take him now to a higher level. The apostle Paul would say, You then, my son, be strong, not in my wisdom, not in my legacy to you. He says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That's a core value, mga kaibigan. Dahil kung tao lamang ang aasahan mo, kung doktor lamang ang aasahan mo, kung scientists lamang ang aasahan natin, kung si Digong lamang ang aasahan natin, kung ang DILG lamang, kung si Mayor lamang ang aasahan natin, we will always fall short. Why? Because everyone is bound by mortality. Kung si tatay lamang or si nanay ang aasahan mo, as we said last Sunday, palaging limitado ang kalakasan ng tao. But the Apostle Paul, in the last letter that he wrote to his spiritual son, he says, My son, be strong. I've always told you, do not be, cur- do not be afraid, do not be timid, but be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Jesus is first. Apostle Paul would remind him, I was never first, Timothy. I've always been second. And now that I'm going to be poured out like a drink offering, now that I am about to finish the race, your eternal source of strength is Jesus Christ alone. Mga kapatid, a son's, a daughter's dependence of the father on the father not just on your earthly dads god bless you if you have very dependable parents here on earth dependable pastors dependable leaders thank god for that but we have a father in heaven we have a redeemer we have a best friend who will never fall short who will never disappoint us who will never break us beyond our capacity to bear he is our lord jesus christ and i give him to you right now kung ikaw man ay natatakot you have been raised up probably to be an independent person. Maybe you have been told by all of these academic pursuits, the intelligentsia that you have been exposed to, that religion is nothing but a crutch. That maybe religion is just an opium to the poor so that it just gives you this fantasy, this pop psychology so that you will have some time or something to hold on to, but it's not really real. It's just an opium. No, my friends. Jesus is real. And His grace is real unto your life. His grace saves. His grace strengthens. His grace sa- pulls you out of whatever quagmire, whatever my clay that you might have been stuck into even if your loved one right now is in the ICU the grace of the Lord is never limited by that door the grace of the Lord is never limited by the quarantine the grace of the Lord is always more than enough the apostle Paul himself would know it my grace is sufficient for you when you are weak, I am strong so the apostle Paul would say so the more that I will glory in my weakness for when I am weak, that's when the perfection of God's strength comes into my life. That's a core value. Maybe habang nangagabayo si Timothy, that would ring in his ears. Timothy, time to step up. It was good for you to love. It is good for you to love your spiritual father, the Apostle Paul. But right now, focus your eyes on the real source of everything. His name is Jesus. Second, this core value. A disciple's duplication. Not just a son's dependence, but a disciple's duplication. The Apostle Paul would tell Timothy in that letter, the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. That even in the Apostle Paul's last few days or weeks, his last few words were words of discipleship. The enemies abound, Timothy. Maraming taong gustong supilin, gustong pigilin, gustong takpan, gustong patayin ang paglaganap ng salita ng Diyos. For every 
cruel tyrant that arose in our history. Their first book that they would command to be burned is the Bible. Communist China did this. Communist Burma did this. Communist Russia did this. Even Hitler did this. Why? Because he knew if people would go to the Word of God, they would have that power. They would have that sword of the Spirit that will cut through the soul and the spirit, the minds and the heart, even the intentions of the minds and the soul. It will be revealed unto you. So the Apostle Paul was reminding Timothy, and Timothy was now realizing this. If Paul has been imprisoned, maybe I would be next. And truly, Timothy, many years after, was beaten to death. Why? Because he tried to stop the procession of the pagans as they now revered Artemis or this idol named Diana, the god of fertility of ancient Greece. But he knew we have this solemn obligation to pass on the truth. Whatever it is that you have received, you pass it on to others so that that person will also pass it on to others. Kaya mga kaibigan, meron tayong Bible ngayon. Because Timothy heeded this call. Because the Apostle Paul was conscientious enough, was aware enough that yes, the enemies of our faith would do anything and everything in their power to quell the spread of the word. But for as long as hearts are open, God would deposit His word therein. And from the full of this heart, we will now transmit this to our children and we will duplicate ourselves and our children will now transmit it to their children and they will duplicate themselves. Mga kaibigan, that's a core value that we will learn from Timothy. That's why we have this Bible today. That's why we can talk about it today. Because Timothy duplicated himself. He depended on God. He duplicated himself. But at the same time, Timothy had a soldier's dedication because such was the admonition of the apostle paul unto him the apostle paul would say timothy endure hardship with us like a good soldier of christ jesus no one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs he wants to please his commanding officer endure hardship he says that's the mentality. That's the uh, tenacity of a soldier. And my friends, I believe this word could never be more appropriate than it is right now in our times. Because these are difficult times. But this I have learned in my life. Though I have not been a military man, the, uh, the farthest that I went in terms of military training was that I was the battalion commander of my high school CAT. Konting marksmanship, konting sword, konting about face or right face. You know, akin natutunan. When I was in the University of the Philippines, I was part of the Rayadilio uh, Honor uh, Battalion. We we would do the uh, calisthenics and all the rifle drills. But that's as much. But I knew how difficult it is to have physical fitness tests, to have road runs. My wife was my high school classmate and she would complain to me when we were in high school pag sumusobra na sa 3 kilometers yung aming uh, road runs sa aming C80 class. Aaway niya ako kaya ako ang magpapaikot sa aming mga classmates para bumalik na. High school pa lang, powerful na, powerful na si Rose sa buhay ko. <laughs> yeah? But I, I understand from the limited perspective that I have and from the many soldier friends that I have, Pastor Leo, our worship leader a while ago is a soldier. He served in the Air Force. He was in the intelligence officer. He went through the rigors of soldiers training. And one thing that he would say, it is not a walk in the park. Kaya kami ni Pastor Leo, pag magkasama kami, pag umaambun ako talaga nagtatago agad dahil mabasa lang ang bumbunan ko, sipun ka agad. Si Pastor Leo sabi niya, Pastor, sa military training ko, hindi na tumatalab sa akin ang sipun. And because of that, my friends, we know this. People that are exposed to hardships, they develop, they, they develop this, what they call now the adversity quotient. People that are able to sustain their focus even in the darkest of hours. That's a soldier's mentality. When enemies are coming from the left side, from the right side, when you are being besieged and it's like, all hell has broken loose. Soldiers have the capacity to be dedicated, to be so focused, to, to keep their eye on the target. 
And soldiers have this mentality that they please no one but their commanding officer. Kung ano ang ipinag-utos ng aking commanding officer, I will have to fulfill it to the letter. Oh, many people are, of course, uh, criticizing our government for putting in place task force that are composed of military, former military people. And I, I don't have much to say about that. But this I know. Maybe because these military generals know how to implement orders. In emergencies like this, maybe these military generals that are now government officials, maybe they know in crisis times like this, isa lang ang magsasalita. Dahil kung away-away pa rin tayo, but of course, your dissenting opinion is always welcome. We are democracy. But maybe these military generals, they know. Whatever the commanding officer says, that we follow. Because our commanding officer only wants the best for his people. I say amen to that. God bless you, President Duterte. And God bless you, generals that are now helping our president. But that is, that is the mentality that now Timothy was now assimilating unto himself. Because that is real life, mga kapatid. I'm speaking to the young people that are now in quarantine. I don't mean to belittle your stature in life, but, uh, and I'm sure one artista got the flack when she said, your fathers were called to World War II, you're being called to watch Netflix in this quarantine time. Now, I don't want to belittle you by saying that, but I'm saying, yes, mahirap ma-quarantine dahil hindi ka makalabas, hindi ka maka-Starbucks, hindi ka makapag-pizza hut, hindi ka maka-gimmick sa beach, uh, summertime na, right? But my friends, if you will endure these times and allow the disciplines that Pastor Jonathan was exhorting us to embrace in times like this, that soldier's dedication will bring us to a better lot in life. All the parents will say, Amen. Amen. Why? Because this is a slice of real life. Maraming bagay sa mundo hindi ibibigay sa in a silver platter. Many, many things in life, paghihirapan mo kapatid. Tinanong ni Kapitan, bakit mo sinuntok yung kapitbahay mo? Sabi ng tao, kasi narinig niya kasi ako na hinihintay kong resulta ng aking AIDS test. Sabi ba naman sa akin ng kapit, kapitbahay ko, think positive, think positive. <laughs> Hindi nga pwede mag-positive sa AIDS test, di ba? Now, Maraming bagay sa mundo I realize hindi kakayanin ng positive thinking. Now, positive thinking is good as Pastor Jonathan exhorted us a while ago. It's better than negativity but there are many things in life hindi kakayanin ng positive thinking. There are things in life you will have to endure through. And that's why I love Pastor Chuck's uh, uh, post a few days ago when he said these times are also good times to revisit the theology of suffering. He said that even if not faith clause. Because there are things in life we are sure God will deliver us from these difficulties. And we say, Amen. There are things in life when we do this, God allows these beautiful things to happen unto us. But that's not the entirety of godly counsel. Because we have seen so many saints, they did the right thing, the Apostle Paul still got beheaded. They did the right thing, the Apostle Peter still got crucified upside down. Many things you do right, but in the principle of sowing and reaping in this natural world, they don't reap what they have sown. They have reaped something else. But the theology of suffering says, even if God does not deliver you in this physical life, even if God does not deliver you from the sufferings that you might have to go through, if you have a soldier's mentality for as long as you fulfill your commanding officer's command, in the military, Pastor Leo, right? You have the posthumous valor award. But for us Christians, we receive life eternal because even death cannot separate us from the love of God. Amen? That's the soldier's mentality. And at the same time, to realize that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but our struggle right now is against principalities and powers with the world, the rulers of this present darkness with the evil spirits in the heavens. So fellow Christians, make no mistake about it. I am not minimizing the biological hazardous effect of COVID virus. Let us avoid it, conquer it, pray for an antidote the soonest time possible. 
But I am sensing in my heart, and many pastors and intercessors have been sensing it, this is more than the COVID virus. This is really a spirit so venomous that right now it is engulfing the hearts of many people all over the world. So that people would rather fear instead of put on their faith. That even Christians would rather shake in their knees instead of going down on their knees in prayers. Mga kapatid, no. There is a spiritual dimension to these things that we are going through. It's against the demonic powers that are trying to undermine whatever God is trying to do in His kingdom. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. And you know that, fellow Christians that you may be able to resist on the evil day and having done everything to hold your ground. So let's have, let us have that soldier's mindset. We must have that belt of truth. We must have that breastplate of righteousness. We must have that helmet of salvation. We must have the shoes fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. We must have the shield of faith, right? We must have the helmet of salvation, shield of faith we must have the sword of the spirit and we must have the power of prayer at all times all of these are our ppes personal protective equipments lumalaban tayo hindi lamang sa virus na to pero ang tunay na ppe natin is our armor of god so that we can refute we can be ex we can extinguish the fiery darts of the enemy in times like this raise up that banner of faith in your household church bawat tahanan sambahan bawat pamilya kapilya envelope your life with such soldier mentality armor of god the devil will not have the better hand in this because we already know the ending of this God will reveal his glory all the more when the dust settles we know Jesus is still seated on the throne and forever it will be so in your house give praise unto the Lord palapakan niyo si Lord palapakan niyo si Lord dahil kailangan natin papurihan ng Panginoon and lastly or second to the last we must have an athlete's discipline another virtue that Timothy was now probably reflecting on as he was galloping through Asia Minor on the way to, to Rome. The Apostle Paul, what did he say? What did my dad say again about athletes' discipline? The Apostle Paul told Timothy, similarly, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not receive the victor's crown unless he competes according to the rules. Now, I am not much of an athlete either. I haven't been part of a varsity team. I don't even know how to dribble a basketball. But I play badminton. I played soccer football when I was in high school. I do a little boxing, but not competitively. But I know when the Apostle Paul would say about the athlete's discipline, that there is a crown that you are fighting for, especially for the competitive athletes that we have right now and so in times like this timothy the apostle Paul would be reminding him not only should I, should you have the tenacity of a soldier but you should have the discipline of an athlete and pastor jonathan already spoke to us a number of those disciplines the discipline of prayer the discipline of fasting the discipline of reading, the discipline of sharpening the saw in this time of quarantine. Basahin mo na yung aklat na yan na matagal mo nang hindi binabasa. The discipline of improving on a skill or maybe developing a new skill. Why? Because you are in route to achieving a crown. Corollary to this, the apostle in another epistle, 1 Corinthians, he would say, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? but only one gets the prize so as an athlete he says run in such a way as to get the prize nandyan ka na rin lang sikapin mo nang ikaw ang mananalo lumalaban ka na rin lang ito dumo na naka-quarantine ka na rin lang abay magdasal ka na mag-intercede ka na mag bible study na kayo bilang pamilya dahil wala nang takas ang mga anak mo ngayon right Natatakot na rin lang ang mga kapitbahay mo, din pamahaginan mo na ng, ng leaflets, ng Word of God, i-text mo na kasi may social distancing pa tayo ngayon. Right? Hindi ka rin lang 
Yes, hindi ka pinapakanta sa church dahil medyo sintunado ka. Pero ngayon sa bahay mo, you can be the praise and worship leader. Sing in such a way as to get the prize. Pastor Jun Rupa, word of God for you. Pwede kang maging praise and worship leader. Right? Why? Because lahat ngayon libreng magpuri sa Panginoon. But the Apostle Paul continues with saying, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. But they do it to get a crown that will not last. Listen, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Itong pinagbubuksi nga ni Manny Pacquiao, itong uh, nire-racing ng mga ating mga Lance Armstrong, itong mga competition ng bodybuilding, itong mga bunong brass na ni Devon Larat, itong mga basketball ni LeBron James, oh, they get prized for that. They get the trophy, they get the MVP. But you know what? Champion ng aking Golden State Warrior last year. Sorry, Golden State Warriors. Kulelat sila ngayon. Those human accolades do not last. But for us believers, when we put our faith in the Lord, when we declare that Jesus is banner, this COVID virus will be gone soon. I declare that in Jesus' name. But the crown that you are now getting, the crown that you are now earning, it is a crown that will last forever and ever and ever. Marami nang dumating, marami nang dumaan, marami nang pinagdaan ng pagsubok ang buong mundo, mga kapatid. Pinigil Tinangkang patay ng Kristyanismo, marami nang naging martir na mga Kristyano. But the crown that they have received from the Lord, nobody can ever take away from them. Amen? Kaya sabi niya, therefore, since we are surrounded, Hebrews 12.1, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with what? With perseverance. The race marked out for us. Oh, mga kaibigan, matira ang matibay sa laban na ito. At dahil nasa atin ang katibayan ng Panginoon, the strength that we have in the grace of the Lord, just like any other competitive athlete, we will survive this, we will finish the race just like the Apostle Paul, and we will have kept the faith up to the very end. I hear an amen in your household right now. Amen. Amen. And lastly, a farmer's diligence. A soldier's dedication, an athlete's discipline. And lastly, a farmer's diligence. Another metaphor that the Apostle Paul reminded or encouraged Timothy to develop in this crucial crossroad, the core of being diligent. He says, the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Importante po yun, mga kapatid. Now I can speak a little about this because my dad was an agriculturist. My mom was a farmer's daughter. Ang lola, loling ko, tsaka lolo Herman ko where they found their livelihood in farming, in tolatola, in inuman. And uh, young as we were, me and my siblings were exposed to the rigors of farming. And so I understand when my dad Pagagalitan kami pag merong natitirang kahit isang mumu doon sa aming plate. We understood that. And maybe young people, you don't understand it now. But we understood that. Why? Because my dad and my mom, they exposed us to the entire cycle of farming. Yung isang masukal na rice field, bubungkalin yan para matanggal ang mga, ang mga kugon. Pag nabungkal na yan, ah, susuyurin pa yan para wala talagang weeds na matira. Pag nalagyan na ng tubig because of rain or irrigation, magsisimula ang tanim. And it's really back-breaking. Pina-experience sa amin ng mga magulang namin yan. Even with the fear of cystosomiasis. We would be there in the rice paddies. And we would wait for three months or four months, depende sa variety. And they took us when we would harvest it. And it was so makati sa, sa yung balat pag nag-harvest. At thresh mo yon or igigiok mo yan in summer, we would do that so that the grains would be separated from the stalk. Oh, we went through that. And not only that, ibibilad mo yan sa, sa init ng araw. One day, two days. Pag inabutan ka pa ng tagulan, talagang panik yun sa buong baryo. Pag yung nakabilad na palay, biglang umambon. Takbuhan. And then after that, pag uga na, pag uh, dry na yung... yung Yung grain, we would take that to the mulinuhan, to the rice mill, and we would see the separation of the grain 
from the from the hall and then you know, you will see the butil the palay the the bigas so you see we understood that in what I want I take on sa pagbante sa pagarado sa pananom sa pagani sa paggiok sa pagmolino sa pagbulad ngatanan mga kasangkayan all of these we understood and that's why kung merong natitirang isang butil sasabi ng tatay ko sobrang hirap ng mga farmers para lamang mabigyan ka ng isang butil na yan at sasayangin mo, ubusin mo yan, sikuhin mo yung anak mo ngayon, sabihin mo, ang dami mong sinasayang kanin, anak, pagdating sa lunch or dinner, may quarantine pa naman tayo, kulang ang bigas ngayon. Right? So, a farmer's diligence is that you know when you know. As a farmer, hard work is your only the one in your control. Hard work. Kailangan lang diligent ka. May control ka ba sa bagyong darating? Wala. May control ka ba kung merong pesting darating? Wala. May control ka ba kung biglang inuod or nilokos yung pananay mo? Wala. But one thing that is in your control is your hard work. You sow it. You sow it. And Jesus Christ would explain it to us, the parable of the sower. Sometimes in your sowing, some seeds talagang tatangayin ng mga birds of prey. Or sometimes they fall on hard places and they don't grow and sometimes they are choked by the thorns and that's why they are wearied down by the worries of life but every now and then and every so often by god's faithfulness some seeds would fall on fertile grounds and it will blossom and it will produce 30 60 a hundredfold my friends in these times maging farmers tayo Magtanim tayo ng salita ng Diyos. Magtanim tayo ng pagmamahal. Tumulong tayo. Mag-adopt a family tayo. Yung 500 pesos na iaambag mo, yung tithes and offerings na ipapadala mo, ang layo ng nararating. Ang daming buhay ang babaguhin. Ang daming buhay ang hindi na magiging katulad ng dati because you have done something that is within your control and that is to plant a seed. All others, you leave up to the Lord because we believe in the Lord of the harvest so because Timothy was a son dependent on Paul and on God he was a child because Timothy was commanded to pass on what he learned to other reliable men he was a discipler and because he was dedicated he was a soldier because he was disciplined he was an athlete because he was Discipline and um, diligent he was a farmer. And therefore, my friends, Timothy, in the crossroad of his life, got to know the Lord in many different dimensions. That God was father to him. That God was his commissioner, the one that commissions him to go and spread the gospel. That God was his commander-in-chief. And that God was his coach and yet, God was also his land owner. So, my friends, this is an I am second mentality. That in all the things you're going through, if you'll be like a Timothy of your time, God is first, I am second. Say that again. God is first, I am second. God has the ultimate say in the things happening in my life. And so, as we now conclude this sermon series, if the first wall to be broken was Joshua's heart, when Joshua's heart worshipped the Lord and submitted to God, the Jericho walls came tumbling down. And if the first path to be clarified was Elijah's vision, when he stayed on with Elijah up to the very end, he saw that Elijah was taken by the chariots of fire. He got the double portion of the anointing. If the first pillar to be strengthened was John the Baptist's character, that he was not Messiah, he was just the lone voice in the wilderness, the Lord hailed him to be the greatest man that ever lived. If the first martyr seed to be sown was Stephen's life, because of Stephen, people started spreading around and started evangelizing with no fear of reprisal. Today I say, the first third generation ministry to be raised was Timothy's call. Jesus Christ was the first generation. The Apostle Paul and all the other apostles were the second generation. The first third generation, pangatlo, was Timothy.
And because Timothy heeded that call, he passed it on to the fourth generation, and the fourth passed it on to the fifth, and now we are the nth generation, and it is now incumbent upon us, Timothys of this life and of this world. We have a world to reach. We have a word to preach. We have a love to share. And yes, we have this power and anointing to experience coming from the Lord. And so again, a shout out to the Timothy Razors of our time. Let me say again what is the obvious one. A shout out to the Lolos and the Lolas. Palapakan nyo nga po mga Lolos and Lolas na sa mga bahay ninyo. Kaya kayo hindi lumalabas. Kasi ang mga lolos and lolas, sila po yung nasa danger zone ng COVID virus. Lolo-lola, kaya kami nagdidisiplina dahil mahal po namin kayo. At panalangin po namin na bigyan pa kayo ng Panginoon ng mahabang-mahabang buhay. Puno at sagana. Salamat at tinuruan niyo kaming manampalataya sa Diyos. Salamat na ang inyong mga kwento, ang inyong mga storytelling ng kami mga bata pa ay... Hanggang ngayon, nag echo sa aming mga memories. We will never ever forget that, Lola. And so we honor you. Salamat na pag nagmamano kami sa inyo, ang inyong pagpapala palagi niyong nire-release sa amin. We bless every Lola and Lola right now. Why don't we do that? Lord, salamat for our senior citizens, those that have been gifted with the gift of what we call the apostolic ministry, ang pag-aalaga sa kanilang mga apo. Salamat, Lord, that in these COVID times, our lawless and lawless are well protected by the blood of Jesus. That, Lord, we will survive these times of COVID. We will survive these moments, Lord. And our lawless and lawless will be healthier than ever. In Jesus' name, everyone will say, Amen. Amen. A shout out for our nanays and tatays. Mahal na mahal namin kayo mga nanay at tatay. Come on, palapakan natin. Kung katabi mo si Mami, si Kasi Daddy, kiss mo naman ngayon. Yes, ngayon na. I-kiss mo ang Mama at Papa. Walang social distancing sa bahay. Salamat na, Yatay. Na kaya kami secure sa panahon ng COVID. Dahil alam namin, kayo ang nag instruct sa amin. Alam namin, kayo ang nagpapakain. Kayo ang namamalengke para sa amin. Kayo ang nagko-coach para kami ay nasa mabuting kalagayan. Nay, Tay, gusto lang namin ipabot sa inyo na hindi nakakaligtas sa aming mga pananaw ang inyong pagmamahal. Hindi man kami katulad ng ibang anak na expressive sa aming pag I love you. Hindi man ganun ang kultura ang kinamulatan namin sa pamilya na palagi kami nag-hug sa inyo. But Nay, Tay, sana ngayong COVID times, simulan natin yung hug sa loob ng bahay. Because now I know, Gusto ko mangyakapi ng mga churchmate ko, hindi ko mayakap. Gusto ko mangyakapi ng aking mga kaibigan, kamayan sila, hindi ko rin magawa. But at least sa bahay na itay, ang pagmamahal ay hindi kailanman nabasag. So we honor you today. Lord, pagpalain niyo po ang aming mga magulang, ang aming nanay at tatay na hindi kailanman nagsasawang kami pagsilbihan at pakainin. At yes, Lord, minsan sermonan na hindi kami... Hindi nagsasawang kami paalalahanan dahil lahat ng bagay na ito, Lord, ay para sa aming kabutihan bilang mga anak nila at bilang mga anak ng Diyos. Mahal namin po sila. Panginoon, ingatan niyo po ang nanay at tatay namin. Lalo tigit, Lord, ang mga nanay at tatay na mga frontliners na iiwanan ng kanilang pamilya. Hindi makikita ng ilang linggo dahil kailangan na sa hospital for so many weeks dahil naka-quarantine din po sila. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. There's a word in your Bible that says, Mizpa. That the Lord watches over us even while we are apart. So Lord, let this be a mizpa moment for the families that are temporarily separated by this pandemic. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, shout out for the teachers na naging disciples namin, naging, naging Timothy raisers namin, lahat. Private teachers, private school teachers, public school teachers. Ay nako, ang aking mother-in-law po ay teacher ko nung ako buong elementary. I would always thank you, Mama Linda, for all of this. Salamat din po sa mga ninongs, ninangs, titos and titas of Manila. Ito po ang titos and titas of Lighthouse. Titos and titas of City Gate. Salamat po sa inyong generosity sa aming mga anak. Salamat po sa inyong generosity sa amin. Salamat po sa inyong constant na panalangin. Alam niyo po, 
social distancing sa church ngayon, di ba? Pero ito yung picture namin few days ago nung kami nag-Zoom prayer meeting. Meron kaming ino-observe sa church ngayon na 7.14 p.m. And we will do this as long as it is called by the Lord for us to do. So we are still together in Zoom meeting. Nakalabing dalawa kami rito ng... Um, or nakasampo kami rito na, na pamilyang nagsama-sama for prayer. Thank you! And we continue to admonish and encourage you, do this! Because lives are being changed. Even our young adults, hindi to ngayong COVID times, ha? but our young adults, young as they are, busy as they are in their budding careers, and yet they disciple people. They raise their Timothys. That's why our young adults' ministries are, it's thriving and it's strong and it's vibrant. And yes, Lord, our youth ministry, ito po yung uh, Zoom meeting lang ng mag-hot truck sila, I think, last Saturday. And so, young people are still being drawn into prayers. Young people are still being drawn into worship. Why? Because the hearts of Pastor Joshua and Pastor Carlo Rosaka and Pastor Nikki and Pastor Ivan, the pastor's hearts just draw them closer and closer unto the Lord. So, mamaya, i-text nyo sila, i-viber nyo sila, i-private message nyo sila. Thank you, Kamo, that in your life, Jesus is first and you have always been second. Wherever you are, everybody stand up out of, uh, out of reverence for the Word of God. We can have our praise and worship here. We will declare, at least for the last time, dahil tapos sa pangating series, and I pray na na-memorize na natin to in all these uh, weeks of reciting this over and over again. This is the Lighthouse Declaration. This is the Citygate Declaration. And this must be the declaration of the rest of the body of Christ. We don't claim proprietary rights to, this, to these verses that the Lord has inspired us to write down. So let's say this together. Lighthouse Declaration. Jesus is first. Say it again. Jesus is first. I am second. Our God is the greatest. Jesus is mighty first. God's agenda is my life. The Spirit is my guide. No power is above His word. No one replaces my Lord. I yield my every dream. My life is all about Him. For the cross he bore, for every pain and wound, I declare, Jesus is first and I am his. I am second. Come on, give praise to the Lord, mga kapatid. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, for sustaining us in the last five Sundays when we, you reminded us that you are always going to be first in our lives. Lord, little did we know that this will be your apt, timely message in these COVID times we are going through. The Lord, more than ever, we humble ourselves before your throne. More than ever, Lord, we bow down before you. More than ever, Lord, we acknowledge that you alone are God. You alone are the Lord. The rest of us, the rest of the finite mortal humanity, we are mere seconds. And if we get this right, Lord, if we get this right, if your people just get this right, then I know, Lord, you will, you will release unto your people such an outpouring of blessings and healing and covering and fullness and joy and such peace we have never seen before because now we know, Lord, our rightful place. You alone are first. We are all second in the name of Jesus.